Fox 61 News at 5 starts now. Today, as Attorney General, I'm invoking my civil rights enforcement authority to investigate. Now at 5, why the state's Attorney General is launching an investigation into a viral video that cost an assistant principal his job. Plus, seven cadets at the Coast Guard Academy are disenrolled over their vaccination status. We're getting response from the commander. And flames turned fatal early this morning. We're hearing from a resident who's being impacted by the fire. And new tonight, we're learning the victim's name. And drought concerns for our electric utilities. A report on how one local utility is making sure we don't go without power. Good evening and thanks for joining us here at 5. I'm Brent Hart. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. We begin with breaking news tonight. Connecticut's Attorney General's launching an investigation into a video that's gone viral. The video appears to show a Greenwich assistant principal discussing discriminatory hiring practices. We have live team coverage tonight. Fox 61's Gabby Molina is live in Hartford where Attorney General William Tong spoke about the investigation. And Fox 61's Matt Karen is in Greenwich with the latest on the community's reaction. And we begin tonight with Gabby. Brent, Sarah, Attorney General William Tong said that he's using his civil rights enforcement authority to launch this investigation. Now, the secretly recorded videos at the center of this investigation were released by Project Veritas. That's an organization that's known for its controversial undercover reporting. The clips appear to show Jeremy Boland, assistant principal at the Costco School in Greenwich, discussing discriminatory hiring practices, saying he will not hire conservatives, Catholics, or candidates of a certain age. Today, Attorney General Tong said he will be looking into any potentially illegal discrimination or other misconduct related to that video. I will not rush to judgment and I will respect due process. I am not going to do anything different just because this is a political season and people want to see me reach one conclusion or another. I also want to make very clear we will conduct a thorough investigation and review and analyze all of the evidence. This will not happen overnight. Attorney General Tong is asking anyone that thinks that they may be a victim of discrimination in that school district or anywhere to give his office a call. Live in Hartford, Gabby Molina, Fox 61 News. Thank you, Gabby. Well, the chance for accountability are growing louder in the wake of this scandal. An assistant principal is now suspended. Multiple investigations are now underway following the bombshell video leaked by controversial conservative Internet news agency Project Veritas. Fox 61's Matt Karen continues our team coverage from Greenwich. Well, today was the first day back for students in Greenwich who arrived to a heightened police presence following the high profile and hot button controversy involving their assistant principal. This is Coscob Elementary School. This is assistant principal Jeremy Boland, who is believed to live here in nearby Stanford. So then what do you do with the Catholics if you find out someone is Catholic? Then what? <laughs> Truly shocked and appalled. Vile and uh, un-American. But is it an isolated incident or indicative of a pervasive culture of indoctrination in education? This is not the thinking of um, school districts in Connecticut. Uh, to say something like this can't occur as elsewhere is, I think, wishful thinking. People in Greenwich told Fox 61 it's more of a case study on human behavior. We all have certain biases, um, you know, big or small. I'm not saying they're they're right, but we all have them as human beings. Some Connecticut conservatives seized the moment to suggest they've been victimized. Maybe you might yawn at the idea that there's discrimination against conservatives. It's exactly what Castro did. While Democrats, like Governor Lamont, questioned the ethics of the video itself. I hate these gotcha guys and clipping, uh, clipping the videos and trying to make political, uh, you know, fodder out of it. We're hoping that the more progressive teachers are actually more savvy about delivering a democratic message. State education officials telling Fox 61 assistant principals almost never make hiring decisions alone. They may be part of a committee. Uh, usually we don't hire in a, in a vacuum. 
And in addition to the three separate investigations that are underway by the state attorney general, the first selectman, and the Board of Education, Governor Lamont also hinted that we may see an investigation by the State Department of Education saying that if laws were broken, quote, consequences will be paid. Reporting in Greenwich, Matt Karen, Fox 61 News. Thank you, Matt. Well, one man is dead and four others are left without a home after an early morning fire in Middletown. The fire chief tells us it was a hectic scene around 4.30 this morning when they responded to that home on Pine Street. Four people escaped, but 63-year-old Carl Rankins, who lived on the first floor, was trapped. He later died from his injuries. Fox 61 spoke with a woman who lived on the second floor with her son. They credit their pet for saving their lives. He's so lucky, we're so lucky that he didn't go up in flames because he woke up from seeing the flames. Wow. And his dog, he has a white pit bull. His dog was going nuts and uh, because he was trying to inform him that something was wrong. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. All right, turning to the weather now and a really beautiful first day of September. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Rachel is telling us is that if you like fresh air, <laughs> this would be a good night to open up the windows. You huh? know, I opened them up earlier today, too. Yes. I said it is time. Get the air <laughs> circulating. Easy, right? Uh, <laughs> this is the time of year where I go, why is my air conditioning on? I, I can turn it off now. We can breathe deeply, at least for now. Uh, heading into the weekend, the warmth comes back. So does the humidity. So enjoy while it lasts. But so on brand for September 1st, right? We've got that blue sky in place over Farmington. The temperature of 79 degrees. So it is not too hot, not too cold. Just right. I will say this. It is warmer along the Connecticut shoreline right now with temperatures in the lower to middle 80s. But the big story here moving forward, at least for tonight, are those refreshing numbers. If you thought it felt cool and comfortable this morning, Wait until you feel Friday morning 48 for the overnight low for some of the cooler locations like Torrington and Willimantic. But for most of us, low to mid 50s as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. So here's how the night goes. If you are heading out the door, maybe to walk the dog around the time the news at 10. Temperatures are in the mid 60s as we head towards daybreak. We're in the 50s. And then once again, we're looking at almost a carbon copy of today, other than it'll be a cooler start to the morning. High temperatures tomorrow will be up around the 80 degree mark with lots of sunshine and low humidity. But as I mentioned before, the humidity creeps back in this weekend and there is a chance for some rain too. We'll break it down day by day so you can plan your holiday weekend coming up. Hi, Rachel. Thank you. Well, seven cadets of the Coast Guard Academy are in the process of being disenrolled after they failed to comply with the military's COVID-19 vaccination mandate. And this comes after their religious and medical waivers were denied by higher authorities. Fox 61's Carmen Chow has the controversial story. A lawyer for the cadets say they were let go with very little notice and did not get any travel arrangements or money. But the academy, on the other hand, says none of that is true. These cadets knew about this vaccine mandate since last year. In August of 2021, an order was issued that all military personnel were to be vaccinated and the Coast Guard Academy was no exception. According to Commander Kristen Bacora, 15 cadets then filed applications for religious or medical waivers. Their requests were all denied. Four cadets chose to resign, four chose to get vaccinated after all, and then the seven who the Academy says failed to get the vaccination. The Coast Guard ha has determined that the COVID-19 uh, vaccine is part of our medical readiness practices. And so it's important to, for uh, Coast Guard members to be medically ready so that we are ready to answer all missions. Three months ago, the seven cadets were informed of their violations and gave them 10 extra days to get vaccinated. When they did not, they were then notified of their disenrollment and was given the chance to appeal, but their appeal was denied on August 15th and the cadets left four days later. The cadets were uh, departed. They were given uh, a week's notice upon about their disenrollment. They were not enrolled in any academic courses, so there was no purpose for them to be here. Commander Bacora says the academy helped set up the cadets travel arrangements and paid for their temporary housing. But Michael Rose, a lawyer for the seven cadets, say the academy never did any of that. One of them is living with another cadet temporarily. One is living in his truck. Rose added a cadet told him he was threatened by the academy to fill out the paperwork to leave. 
there is zero reason to require them to leave with only 48 hours notice. They have to sell their computer equipment and their personal possessions in order to generate the cash to go home. The commander also added these seven cadets did get their other mandatory vaccines, but that they specifically just didn't want to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Their disenrollment is currently still being processed. Reporting in New London, Carmen Chow, Fox 61 News. All right, Carmen, thank you. Meanwhile, the CDC met today to discuss a new round of COVID booster shots. The FDA announced earlier in the week they were authorizing new combination shots with protection against the Omicron variants that are now responsible for nearly all infections. The CDC is deciding who should get the shots and when. The CDC's ultimate decision is in the final steps before shots begin rolling out. Middlesex Health is lifting its COVID-19 visitor restrictions. There's no longer a limit on the number of visitors and COVID positive patients will now be allowed visitors. The minimum age to visit is changing as well now to two years old. This applies to all Middlesex locations except the pregnancy and birth center and the inpatient behavioral health unit both have a limit still on two visitors. Per federal regulations, face masks are still required.